I'm Annie Claude and I'm a University of Minnesota Extension educator working in fruit crops. When the face of climate change, there are a number of things that are out of a grower's control. Fortunately, one of the things that they can control is what crops and what varieties they choose to grow. Most fruit diseases thrive during wet or humid weather. With increased rainfall and heavier storms associated with climate change, fruit disease pressure will be higher in some years. Grapes, strawberries, and apples, the three most popular fruit crops in Minnesota, all have a suite of diseases that must be managed in order to preserve the crop. Fortunately, fruit growers can select varieties with better natural resistance to diseases. And many of these more modern and resistant cultivars are also highly marketable, like the new Triumph Apple, which has apple scab resistance. So this vine, as you can see, it's been here for about four years and its overall health just isn't that great. So. The University of Minnesota Fruit Breeding Program plays a critical role in introducing fruit varieties with disease resistance, cold hardiness, and other desirable traits. The plant that I'm standing in front of has a lot of powdery mildew. You can see the entire leaf surface is covered with powdery mildew. It's sporulating, it's that gray color, and, and we can see some damage throughout. Our breeding program in the modern era started in the early 1980s with the idea of developing cold hardy wine grapes for Minnesota and across the region. Climate change is definitely having an impact on how we think about breeding objectives. Our goal is to increase the sustainability for production. So that means that growers can apply less fungicides, less insecticides throughout that season. We've been focusing on disease resistance for the last five or six years in particular, with a focus on understanding the genetic control of powdery mildew resistance. And growers in some regions will spray 20 or more times a year to control for that disease. We're fortunate in our breeding program to have disease resistant, or at least tolerant in some cases, varieties. The crescent is kind of a cool example where it's highly susceptible to downy mildew on the leaves, but the fruit don't get that disease at all. So we're really curious about what's going on there. Marquette we've seen have some tolerance to powdery mildew. It certainly creeps in later in the season. For Itasca, we've seen that it's resistant to powdery mildew, downy mildew, and has shown really limited phylloxera susceptibility. So to us, that's a pretty good indication that that plant is good for someone who wants to grow grapes sustainably. The U of M Apple Breeding Program also screens their breeding stock and new cultivars to see which ones offer disease resistance. They also screen them for many other things, such as texture and flavor. Growers should consider the natural disease resistance of apple varieties as part of their decision on which ones to plant. When it comes to apples, rootstock selection also impacts disease resistance. Cornell University's Geneva Rootstock Breeding Program selects for resistance to fire blight, Phytophthora root rot, and replant diseases. Many of their rootstocks also have resistance to apple scab, woolly apple aphids, and burnot. With warmer temperatures coming earlier in the spring, this actually increases the risk that we would have an early bud break followed by a late frost that then kills those buds. Some varieties and fruit species are less sensitive to this stress and are less likely to break bud too early. That's why we see climate change being a major issue and really thinking about in the breeding program, how do we get vines that can avoid that late spring frost? How do we um, choose parents that break their buds later, that can hold on to that dormancy later in the season, but still have enough time to ripen a crop? Some species break bud later than others. Apricots are very early, followed by grapes, strawberries, apples, and blueberries. Blueberries at full bloom can be damaged at 28 degrees, but they bloom so late in May in Minnesota that the risk of freezing temperatures is very low. Due to climate change, we're seeing more precipitation in the fall. You can imagine grapes that are out here hanging like this. This netting might help in a hailstorm, but consider the fact that they're just out here really gonna take on what other weather is coming at it, whether it's strong wind events, heavy rain, or hail and apples are really no different. Unfortunately, we get a lot of our major weather events later in the summer, right before harvest or during the harvest season. And that's the time where our farmers are really key on what crop they're gonna have available. They've marketed it, you know, developed where they're gonna sell those. And they do all of the hard work only to get towards the end of the season and have that crop ruined by a major weather event. 
One of the advantages of growing some of the earlier varieties is that we're not as much at risk for extreme weather events. We're seeing more rain in August and September, and if we're able to get the crop off before we have extreme weather events, that means those plants and that crop is at less risk. Some years, climate change may bring longer periods without precipitation, such as in 2021. While blueberries, raspberries, and strawberries cannot be grown without irrigation, grapes and apples are more drought tolerant. We're fortunate that grapes have an extensive root system and that a mature vine like the one behind me, its roots can go out 20 feet um, pretty much in any direction, which means it's able to tap into water supplies that are deep in the soil and really access the nutrients and other resources that are there. Grapes, we expect to get to about six feet tall in their first year. And if they're not doing that, that's because they're competing too hard with weeds. In, in particular, that's competing for moisture that's in the soil. So keep in mind, if you're planting a new crop, to manage the weeds around the plants, provide enough water, and that's especially true in a droughty year. Crops like apples um, are pretty similar. Um, they have extensive root systems, but things that we do see in droughty years are the fruit are often smaller and less of a crop. So that can be a challenge. Some of the lesser known berry crops, such as honeyberries, aronias, saskatoons, otherwise known as June berries, and black and red currants, also offer up opportunities for climate resilience. These are often very drought resistant, rarely require irrigation, they have fewer disease issues, and they usually ripen very early in the season before a lot of our insect pest problems. Their markets are not very well developed here in Minnesota, but some growers are interested in building those new markets and exploring them. And for those growers, these offer interesting opportunities. <music>